So afternoon, everybody. It's uh, been a really interesting session. It's fas always fascinating hearing what other people in other parts of UCD are getting up to on the same topic. So each of us brings our own little perspective, and then we hear what it means something completely different to people over in the arts and humanities. I, I find it really fascinating. I have slides. It's only to help me remember, though. I've only got two. Uh, so um, it's a carrot and stick. So the carrot is that selfishly we're able to improve our citations. We can boost our H index, or whatever index is flavor of the month, this month. Um, it helps you with your grant applications, because your, the people looking at your grants are also looking at your open access. There's no doubt it helps you get speaker invites to conferences. There's no doubt it helps with UCD promotions, because they're looking at citations, impact factor, all of that, and their measurable outputs. So that's all the carrot stuff. So we're selfish and academics, as somebody said. Their first priority is if they look after themselves, the UCD bit will probably take care of itself, which is, is true in the sense that we, we heard about in the rankings that the citations per academic is an important figure. I hadn't actually thought about that until I heard that today, and of course it makes perfect sense. OK, so there's a wider issue then in that you know the public have paid for our research, most of us. And Science Foundation Ireland, uh, that would be IRC and all the other agencies. And the taxpayers, they should have access to what you're publishing. And they shouldn't have to go through paying publishers. Because in effect, they're paying twice for the research. So that's fundamentally wrong that um, our research isn't available in the way that it, it should be at, on open access. So here's the stick. So the stick is now the funding agencies. So they're now beating us over the head and saying, you must be open access. And I think this is where the RMS system has really helped. I think SFI have accepted that that, 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 that will do. OK, it's not gold 3,000 euro access, and they won't pay for that. I'm not sure anybody should be paying that amount for any article to, to, um, to go that way. In fact, it's really drug companies um, from, in my research that I see uh, paying that, that fee. Or if someone has a nature or a science paper or something like that, they might pay uh, for that. So I think you need a really good reason to, to shell out that money. You can use this slush account. Sorry, that's not a, a, it's not a true word we're allowed to use anymore. Um, the OBRSS, and I can't even remember what, it's, what it stands for, but certainly over in science, medicine, and vet, uh, you get money for um, if you have PhD students and if you're publishing in high-impact journals. Somebody calculates a figure and they put this money into your account. So it's about 2,000 euros or something per year, depending on how well you do. And you can use that money if you wanted to pay or contribute to open access. So it's quite a generous view of how that money should be used, as long as it's to benefit research in the broadest sense. So that's good. Um, so the final thing is that we were talking about our practices changing. In fact, I haven't been in a UCD library in about three years. So in fact, one of the students had to help me through the barrier to put my card in <laughs> to actually get me into the library today. So it's the same thing. I used to pay for interlibrary loans, and my grad students would be the same. But now we're all lazy. Now we're going directly. We're emailing the authors directly. Or we're, we're nearly expecting you to see it on PubMed, and we get really annoyed if we don't. And our inclination probably is not to cite if we can't get good access. So we're, my default now is actually to email the authors directly. So I think that, that that's a change of practice, and we, we need to address that. And the point that was raised by the last speaker on basically science wasn't really done before 1960. Think of all the papers now. They're, they're buried in the stacks of the library. They're never going to be read again. And in effect, we've got funding agencies funding the same science again, and it's already been done. It's actually frightening and it's such a great waste of money. OK, I have a simple process. I just thought I'd put this out there. For, for what I do when I get a paper out, just to, I have a little system, because if you don't have systems in place, uh, you, you, things get lost. So the first thing is you put, the, you put the paper on the CV. Everybody has their CV. You keep adding to it. You should always have your CV uh, on, on your folder. Put the DOI address on. Then you go to the UCD RMS. You put in the final word version, and this time you're tagging in the figs and the tables. And you let UCD RMS people, let them make the call on whether it's eligible. So that's their job. They're good at it. Let them do it. So at the same time, now, I am on ResearchGate. Now, this is going to become, uh, I'm sure, a question for the, for the uh, discussion. So ResearchGate has um, thousands of scientists on it. And 
I would say half of my papers are on in the Word version. And they're all legal, they're legit. But certainly some publishers won't allow even your Word version on for about a year. And it's unclear who they are all the time, and this is causing the mix-up. But on the other hand, we've got authors who are just, you know, they're depositing in the published version. And they're just not thinking, and that's messing it up for everybody. So I really like ResearchGate because it's a give and take in that you get access to other people's papers and they get access to yours. So my question to the library people is, why do we need UCDRMS? Why can't we just have a very large research gate for everybody that all of the universities are, are, are buying into? And therefore, that, and therefore we get very good um, quality of website and so on and, and numbers. So I'm just curious as to why we need a UCDRMS in this regard. And I'm sure there's a, there's a very simple answer that someone's going to tell me in a minute. So the next thing I do, I link it to ORCID ID. So UCD supports ORCID. So that's good. So get your papers onto that um, uh, in, in terms of um, where, where you're publishing. And then twice a year, I go on to SFI database because they have a horrible census that they call in December when you're doing exams. And they want you to get it done by January 16. It's typical SFI. Their, their closing dates for their grants are always in the middle of something bad at UCD. So um, I do that twice a year. And basically, what they're trying to do is link your papers to specific grant numbers so that they can plot where your, what outputs are being linked to specific grants. So that's it. I just do four databases. And I, don't, I haven't actually thought about the things that everyone else has been saying about the, the impact of being open access. I sort of do it automatically. And I'm hoping that good stuff is going to come out of it. And clearly, from what I've heard this morning and this afternoon, it's, uh, it must be the case from the very convincing arguments I've heard from everybody else. So that's it.